My name is Ruben Wiersma, and in my thesis, I transfer key algorithms from learning and computing on 2D grids to curved surfaces. I argue for making this transition with intrinsic operations, which means you operate from within the surface, like the perspective of an ant walking on your hand. The benefit is that you're directly robust to isometric deformations. It's efficient because we work in 2D instead of 3D. And unlike working with image projections, you don't need to deal with distortion or occlusion. I'll cover three contributions we made in this direction. First, CNNs on curved surfaces with harmonic surface networks. On images, we can apply convolutions that encode directions because the pixel grid gives us a global coordinate system. We can find vertical and horizontal edges and combine these into layers of a neural network. On surfaces, we don't have such a global coordinate system. So how can we still encode and learn from directional information? We show that you can construct filters that are rotation invariant and equivariant, which can be applied through the exponential map. You can use parallel transport to keep the equivariance property and arrange the network so that we get rotation invariant features as output. With DeltaConf, we tackle the same problem from a different perspective. Instead of shifting filter kernels over the surface, we apply operators from vector calculus. An example is the Laplacian used in prior work. This operator is coordinate independent, but it doesn't use directional information. We show that you can learn to construct anisotropic operators using classic ideas. The Laplacian can be broken up in gradient and divergence. If we apply a nonlinearity in between, you achieve an anisotropic operator. The result is DeltaConv, which can be applied in general learning tasks, such as classification and segmentation. Compared to a network without anisotropic features, DeltaConf increases the accuracy and precision and beats the state of the art at the time of publication. Finally, Gravel Multigrid. Here we look at solving linear systems, which is useful for many tasks in geometry processing. Multigrid methods solve such linear systems efficiently by solving on multiple grids at different scales. The main challenge is to define a hierarchy and restriction and prolongation operators for curved surfaces. In Gravel Multigrid, we create a hierarchy by sampling points on the surface. For our prolongation weights, we compute graph Voronoi cells and then construct triangles from the neighboring Voronoi cells. Then we use barycentric coordinates as prolongation weights. Using these triangles ensures that a point always receives information from multiple directions during prolongation and restriction, and it minimizes the number of entries in the prolongation matrix, which enables quick solving iterations. Our technique is multiple orders of magnitude faster in construction than prior work while retaining the solving speed. In summary, my thesis shows the usefulness of intrinsic approaches in transferring algorithms from 2D to 3D. Hello, my name is Chen Xi. My thesis focuses on processing freehand vector sketches. Freehand sketching is the fast and intuitive way for artists to communicate visual ideas. Vector sketches contain more information and thus often serve as inputs for sketch-based editing and modeling methods. This method expects clean vector sketches with accurate junctions and no overdrawing. But typical human sketches are not clean. While we as viewers can easily understand the structure, the downstream applications cannot. My thesis specifically tackles the overdrawn strokes and the accurate junctions. Together, our approaches form a pipeline capable of cleaning up a raw vector sketch, a process we call consolidation, then determining accurate connectivity for applications such as colorization. These resulting papers were published with the help of my amazing co-authors. As our goal is to mimic human perception of a sketch, data-driven approach is a natural consideration. However, because of difficulties of annotations, we face a lack of data for both problems. To overcome this challenge, we examine the geometry of a sketch and break down the problem into smaller and simpler local decisions. We find inspirations from perception studies and measure perceptual cues in the local level. In this way, we are able to generate multiple training examples even from a single annotated sketch and to reliably learn these basic cues. Our first consolidation method using values determined by perception studies is able to handle different levels of details. 
Of a second consolidation method uses additional cues and a drawing order to work with incremental stroke input. This method outperforms our previous method and demonstrates superior performance over raster space methods. Given a now consolidated clean drawing, a cartoon artist may want to color it. The classic bucket tool often fails for this purpose. We train two classifiers for binary junctions, which are plenty in our small set of annotated drawings, and use them to determine the connectivity of more complicated high valence junctions. With our full method, we obtain accurate connectivities. Overall, my thesis integrates these three projects into a pipeline that would benefit future sketch-related methods and interactions. We also see exciting future directions, as recent pre-trained models demonstrate great power as priors, how to use these models for drawing, processing, and editing tasks is an interesting question to answer. Thank you for your listening. Hi, my name is Rohan Sahani. I'm a PhD student at Carnegie Mellon advised by Keenan Crane, and my thesis is titled Monte Carlo Geometry Processing. So numerous physical phenomena in science and engineering, such as thermal diffusion, structure mechanics, and electrostatics, are described by certain basic yet fundamental partial differential equations like the Poisson equation. My thesis explores how we can solve such equations using the Monte Carlo method in domains with extremely complex geometry without needing any volumetric meshing. We achieved this by introducing the walk on spheres algorithm to the graphics community, which like Monte Carlo path tracing performs recursive random walks to smoothly interpolate boundary data such as temperatures, displacements, or colors into the interior of a domain. In place of ray intersection queries, the only geometric kernel we require is computing the distance to the boundary. So back in the 90s, photorealistic rendering switched from finite element radiosity to Monte Carlo ray chasing because meshing complex scenes is really hard. So by avoiding finite element meshes completely, Monte Carlo methods in rendering revolutionized industries like entertainment, industrial design, and computer vision. But even in 2023, geometry processing and simulation still depend on meshing tools that either throw away important geometric detail at low tolerances, or literally take hours to generate a volumetric mesh that gets the geometry right. So if we spend all of our time converting our domain into a mesh that's sim-ready, then that defeats the purpose of having fast or accurate finite element solvers. So this is where I believe Monte Carlo methods like walk-on spheres provide a lot of the same benefits we see with rendering today, such as progressive and view-dependent evaluation, perfect parallel scaling, hardware accelerated data structures such as bounding volume hierarchies, the ability to scale to billions of instance elements, and to easily handle geometry with defects and low quality triangles. So in a series of papers published at SIGGRAPH, we significantly expand the capabilities of walk-on spheres to solve a much larger class of PDEs. For instance, we take inspiration from volume rendering to design a delta tracking variant of walk-on spheres to solve PDEs with variable material coefficients, handling highly detailed scenes without any geometric pre-processing or homogenization. We also show how to solve PDEs with Neumann conditions, demonstrating how physical simulation can be made more like rendering in terms of rapid feedback. So here we preview how a detailed CT scan of a piece of bread will brown under different conditions faster than a real toaster. Finally, we designed several variance reduction strategies inspired by techniques in rendering, which greatly reduce noise, for instance, in a potential flow simulation. And our method can directly handle game assets designed for visualization in place of sim-ready meshes needed by traditional solvers. Now, Monte Carlo may never be applicable for certain types of simulation, but given how far it's brought us in simulating realistic illumination, my thesis opens the door to building something like a ray chaser for physical problems with extremely complex geometry. Hi, I'm Sylvia, a PhD student at the University of Toronto, and my research concerns 3D geometric synthesis, meaning how are shapes generated and captured. One case of this is 3D modeling, which is the whole process that goes from a person conceiving of a 3D object in their mind to that object existing on a computer somewhere. 
This can take many forms. For example, drawing in virtual reality is a process that's filled with engineering challenges, but also a very interesting mathematical fundamental problem, which is how to compute the 3D brush, brush stroke of an object or the region of space that is covered by an object along any trajectory. This is called the sweat volume of the shape, and in one of my earlier works we proposed a way of computing it that is better and faster than previous works and can be integrated into VR applications to compute any one sweat volume for any one object and any one trajectory. In a recent follow-up we made it even more efficient by allowing it to generalize to many trajectories and shapes. One of the selling points of 3D modeling software is precisely just how free it is. However, in the real world, sometimes you do encounter limitations, be it because of the machinery that will be used to fabricate an object or because of material constraints. Another interesting situation is when you want to model an object for a very specific application, for example, for solving partial differential equations, as we explored in one of my earliest works, or even simulating realistic fractures for any given object receiving any given impact. Another type of 3D synthesis is 3D reconstruction, which is the process of computing a surface, for example, from a point cloud of an object. Something I have thought lately about is just how underdetermined this problem is, uh, which we formalize in a series of recent works that quantify the uncertainty in this reconstruction process. To compute quantities like collision probabilities, next best view positions, and even efficiently update a scan upon capturing more data. In these works, we considered the specific case of point clouds, but in more recent works, we even compute similar quantities for multi-view image representations like those used in NERF, and even sign distance fields, where our statistical perspective lets us significantly improve on the accuracy of previous works. Thank you very much for listening. I'm Xilong Zhou from Texas A&M University. The topic of my thesis is towards practical and robust material acquisition and generation. In the running pipeline, material properties is an important factor determining the appearance of the scene. In general, there are two ways to obtain material properties. Single shot material acquisition that extracts material properties from single image and material generation that produces material by sampling random seeds. The existing learning-based method suffers several limitations. Many acquisition methods produce highlight burning artifacts, lack like editability, tolerability, and their compositional expense. In addition, the existing material generators are not editable and tileable, and the sampled material are not realistic. To solve these limitations, I propose several practical and robust approaches for material acquisition and generation. Let me first introduce material acquisition, where I propose a look-at strategy to avoid burning artifacts and speed up optimization. In the existing method, optimization under the constraint of prior produces SVBIDF with highlight burning artifacts, and the optimization process is time consuming. We address this issue by taking test time optimization into training process, where we train a prior on an existing dataset, so that during inference, the learned prior can convert to SVBIDF without burning artifacts after only a few gradient updates. Next, to introduce editability and tileability, we propose lightweight material prior. Given a targeted image, we map the initial pattern noises to SVBIDF through optimizing the specialized design material prior. Our system is lightweight and does not require any pre-training process. The output material can be easily edited by changing different input patterns. Moreover, thanks to our specialized design, the results are always tileable. The second part of thesis is the material generation. I first introduce Tygen. Tygen is built upon GAN that is modified to preserve tileability and take conditional pattern as input. Train on synthetic dataset, Tygen can generate material with different style while conditioned on input patterns. The generated material are always tileable and can be directly applied to rendering pipeline. Lastly, to improve the realism of sampled result, we propose Photomat. All the existing material generators are trained on synthetic dataset, which has a visual gap to real-world materials. To tackle this issue, we develop a novel method to train a photomat exclusively on real flash photos, and by sampling latent space, photomat can generate photorealistic materials. In conclusion, 
In my thesis, to mitigate the limitation of existing methods, I propose two lightweight material acquisition methods and two material generators. Thank you for watching. Hi, my name is Dr. Zachary Ferguson, and this video provides a fast forward of my thesis. Physical simulation is a ubiquitous tool across numerous fields. Despite decades of research, simulating contact remained a challenging problem requiring small time step sizes and per scene parameter tuning to get plausible results, which is impractical at large scales. We solved this by introducing methods that provide reliable, stable, and intersection free guarantees independent of geometry and parameter choices. Thus, we introduced incremental potential contact method, which is capable of simulating complex contact dynamics, all while provably guaranteeing no intersections or inversions occur. IPC works by replacing traditional gap constraints which are hard to optimize with smooth barrier functions that grow to infinity as distances shrink to zero. This optimization can be solved robustly using Newton's method with line search, where we limit the step size using continuous collision detection. CCD detects if and when a collision occurs over a time interval. However, choosing a correct CCD method matters as inaccurate methods can lead to missed collisions or intersections. This is why in a follow-up work, we introduced a CCD benchmark with ground truth for over 60 million queries extracted from simulators. And we introduced the first efficient, provably conservative method, tight inclusion. Following these two works, we introduced rigid IPC, a new method for performing CCD of nonlinear trajectories. This allowed us to simulate complex rigid mechanics like this lockbox, all while guaranteeing no intersections occur. We also apply a similar piecewise linear technique to enable high order IPC. Using our method, we are able to robustly simulate nonlinear geometry like this armadillo composed of nonlinear tetrahedra. Lastly, we introduced in time step remeshing, a method for remeshing within the simulation. Our method determines when to refine and coarsen based on physical forces rather than geometric criteria. In conclusion, we introduced methods for reliably simulating deformable and rigid contacts with intersection-free guarantees, provably correct continuous collision detection for linear and nonlinear trajectories, and methods for accurate simulation using high-order IPC and end-time sub-remeshing. We also release all of this work as open source libraries, including the IPC toolkit, which implements all the core components of IPC and a full simulator named Polyfin. Our work has sparked a revolution in physical simulation with numerous follow-up works, such as providing intersection-free guarantees for real-time simulations, differentiable simulation capable of handling complex contact, improved methods for simulating robotics tasks, and physically accurate simulation of biomechanical settings. With that, I say thank you to all my collaborators and family, and thank you for watching. Hi, my name is Pascal Gale. I recently graduated my PhD at the University of Strasbourg, France. I am going to talk about textures and material synthesis. Our motivation is the content creation for films and video games of highly realistic and detailed scenes. Usually you have two techniques. First, by example texture synthesis, which requires some stationarity in the input exemplar and fails to preserve structures. They are difficult to control and edit because of the lack of parameters. On the other side, you have procedural modeling, relying on noise functions, which require expert knowledge and trial and error authoring, and produce a limited type of structures. You also have texture basis functions, which are similar to noise, with much more potential to model visual structures, but there is not much research on them. You also have dedicated tools like Substance Designer, where the artists build huge and complex procedural node graphs, which are time-consuming and require years of expertise. Our contribution in this field is what we call semi-procedural texture synthesis, where we take the best of the procedural and the by-example worlds. We separate the structure synthesis from the color detail synthesis, thanks to a basic observation. Many natural textures embed spatial stochastic structures that can be characterized by binary images. We can model all these types of primitives with a generic sparse convolution noise-like function of structures which encompasses all previous models, is infinite, unbounded, without repetitions, editable and controllable.
we call it point process texture basis function. When you do a mixture of these elements and threshold them, we obtain a mask of visual structures with different kinds of topologies. Here is our pipeline. From an input image, we are able to find the closest procedural model by different kind of techniques. And in a second stage, the details are example-based using a parallel optimization approach constrained by the procedural structures, which guarantees visual similarity, preserves the procedural properties, and is automatic. You can relax some constraints on structure, either follow it or follow the exemplar, or morph in between. You can make spatial variations of the structure parameters. We can do appearance transfer by keeping the structure and changing the colors. We can extend it to automatically to materials, synthesizing the other maps at the same time. We also show how, from an input image, we can find the closest procedural model, with different kinds of techniques with Gaussian process latent variable model, navigating into a space of structures. We compare it to others, and we show that we improve structure consistency. We have good visual match event when the structure is not perfect, and synthesis is fast. What's next? We are working on limitations like handling branching structures and managing complex spatial arrangements of labels like alternating colors. Hi, I'm Maz. In my thesis, I develop methods for volumetric mapping for medical imaging and geometry processing. Mapping is core to many applications in healthcare, biology, and computer graphics, for example, to facilitate segmentation and texture transfer of 3D shapes. Despite its importance, the vast majority of existing methods focus only on mapping surfaces, which represent the boundary of 3D objects while essentially ignoring the interior volume information. Many applications, however, require fully volumetric approaches, such as for internal geometry transfer and for mapping volumetric data, such as from brain MRI scans. In one work, we sought to tackle the correspondence problem, which is to compute a low distortion map from one object to another. The map can displace vertices from a source mesh to a target, for example. In the volumetric case, one must also map interior vertices to the interior of the target while aligning boundaries. In particular, we want our method to be symmetric in that it should be invariant to the choice of the source and the target shape. We achieve this by mapping bidirectionally using symmetrized distortion energies. We propose an optimization framework that uses a symmetrized energy eSIM to compute the map phi. In the paper, we perform careful analysis on how to symmetrize any existing distortion energy, for example, the as rigid as possible energy, as well as how to pick the right distortion energy for mapping to achieve the desired result. Using this framework, we're able to compute maps between highly dissimilar shapes, such as from this cow to this horse mesh. You can see our map in the right with the interior checkerboards demonstrating low distortion. We also found that volume information may repair surface maps. You can see a state-of-the-art surface mapping approach here results in areas of volume collapse because surface distortion energies are often not aware of interior volume or are not extrinsic, whereas our fully vo volumetric approach corrects for this. Zooming out a bit, a key motivating application of this work is to improve the analysis of placental health during pregnancy. The placenta delivers oxygen and nutrients to support the growing fetus, and we collect 3D MRI scans over time to monitor the placenta. As there is large distortion and deformations, mapping is key to monitor function. To this end, I developed a set of geometry processing algorithms to enable clinical research and applications. Starting from a raw MRI scan, we propose a shape-aware segmentation method to extract the 3D placental shape, which we can then use in our volumetric correspondence approach and extensions that include image information. We also tackle the problem of volumetric parameterization to unfold the placental volume to a standardized representation. Using these methods, we've been exploring several different clinical studies, such as analyzing what happens to the placenta during a contraction, studying differences in twin pregnancies, as well as performing post-delivery imaging and analysis. In summary, 
Volumetric mapping is an unexplored area with many possibilities. There are several applications in graphics, such as to see if this improves surface mapping and enables geometry transfer, as well as applications in other domains, such as medical imaging, biology, and simulation. Hi, I'm Yi Wei. My thesis focuses on efficient material altering by inverse material modeling. Creating high-quality digital material is a hard problem. Inverse material acquisition methods recover material properties from photos. Although it's fast and easy to use, the materials usually have a limited resolution and editability. On the other hand, procedural materials have unlimited resolution and easy to edit. However, it's much harder to design. In my thesis, I combine both methods to get the best solution. Given an image or text prompt, can we generate a procedural material graph? To solve this problem, we start from addressing a simpler one using non-generative methods, and later we move to a generative model to learn how to build graphs. What if we already have a node graph as input, but we don't know its parameters? Assuming that we already have access to a material graph database, we first select node graphs and then estimate their parameters. For parameter estimator, we train a CNN to predict parameters for each material graph, which is our first work. And in our follow-up work, we apply gradient-based optimization to further optimize parameters to better match the appearance. After recovering the material graphs from the input image, we can easily achieve high-resolution synthesis procedurally. We can also procedurally texture 3D models, and users can also adjust the parameters in the graphs and achieve faster visual feedback. However, a material graph database is not always easy to access. In another work, we do not require an existing material graph as input, rather we create a material graph directly from the material maps. The key idea is to first break down material into subcomponents, and then proceduralize the components into procedural functions, such as noise functions and point functions. We combine these procedural functions into a template graph and perform parameter optimization again to further match the material. Results show that our proceduralized material can closely match the input material maps. However, material proceduralization is based on a template graph structure. Can we generate the graph structure by learning from the material database? Our generating model is partially built upon Metformer. A graph can be represented as different sequences for nodes, edges, and parameters. We leverage transformers to generate graph sequences. Given an image input, the model first generates a node sequence and then generates an edge sequence that connects these nodes. And finally, with the parameter sequence generated, the rendered graph output can match the appearance of the input. Our model can generate material graphs given input images, and can also generate graphs from text prompts. To summarize, my thesis tried to solve a graph-based inverse modeling problem for materials. For future work, we can extend our method to solve other graph-based modeling problems, like shader graphs. We can also consider more design modalities such as audio sketch for materials, providing users more fine-grained controls. Feel free to look at my thesis for more details and results. Thank you.